Well, hi there guys and welcome to the video. Now, I think one of the most difficult VMs to install on KVM, it has to be OSX. So in this video, I'm going to show you a new method I've recently discovered to install OSX on Unraid that is really, really easy to do. Now, you don't even need to create install media to do this, and you'll also avoid a lot of other frustrating issues that we all used to have to go through. <laughs> Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to install OSX on our Unraid server in the easiest and quickest way that I've found to date. Hey, I can hear you say Space Invader, you've done OSX videos before. Well, yes, that's true, but I believe this is really the best way of doing it and it saves a lot of time and you don't have to be making install images from the App Store. It works with both Sierra or El Capitan, so this video supersedes all the others that I've done in the past. The great thing about this method is we actually get to configure and install the system before we even put it on Unraid. And as a result, we can avoid the awful VNC mouse problems during the install, which is present in the previous method. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to install it using VMware Fusion on a machine already running OS X. So yes, you still do need access to a Mac to do this, but then you did using the original method as well. So if you don't have your own Mac, you must know someone who does. Use your mums, use your dads, your brothers, your neighbours. Hell, even go into the Apple store and say you want to test out a Mac for an hour. Well, okay, no, don't do that part. Let's just stick with using a Mac that belongs to someone you know. Now, the great thing about using VMware on a Mac is that it can create a VM of OS X from the Mac's recovery partition. So there's no more making install media from Sierra downloaded from the App Store cool huh? Well VMware is a great program and it's well worth the money in my opinion but what if you don't want to have to buy it just to install OSX on Unraid? Well use the link in the description, go straight to the download page and download the 30-day trial in order to install the VM. So click on download VMware Fusion. Okay Okay, once done, install your VMware Fusion, and once installed, open the program and you'll see a window coming up asking you to select your install method. Now we need to select the second one down, Install OSX from the Recovery Partition. So click on Continue. Next we need to give the VM a name, and I'm going to call this one Sierra. And by default, the files are saved into a folder called Virtual Machines, which is in your Documents folder in the Home folder, as you can see here. So click on to save and just leave all of these settings as default, there's no need to customise any settings and don't worry about your hard drive only being 40 gigs, you can always expand that later on. So click on to finish, so now click on the arrow button to start installing whichever operating system you're running on this Mac from the recovery partition into the VM. So just go through the install as normal, click on the default options and next, next, next. Then just fill in your details such as your language, your keyboard type, that sort of thing. And as you can see there's no problem with mouse function as there is using VNC in the original install method. Okay, so now's the time to install all of the things onto OSX that we need to make it run on Unraid. So enter into your browser www.splashtop.com now we're going to download the free version of Splashtop, the personal version. Um, this version is available for free to use on the local network to access the virtual machine. But if you want to access your virtual machine from over the internet, there is a small fee of $16.99 to pay. And why do I like Splashtop Desktop? Well, one of the main reasons is, unlike VNC, you also get sound through Splashtop Desktop, rather like Remote Desktop for Windows. So on the VM we want to download this one here, the streamer, because the ones on this side, these would install on the computer that we want to access the VM from. So Windows would be this one and OS X would be this one. Right, so let's download the Mac OS X streamer. Okay, so next we want to install the Clover bootloader. So you want to download the file in the description to the desktop and then double click the file to extract it 
and open a folder and there you'll see the Clover installer. Then double click on that to install that onto the VM. Now you're going to get this come up saying it's from an unidentified developer. So click on to OK and then click the cog button down at the bottom here and go to security and privacy and then click on open anyway. And the version of Clover we're installing is the R3974. Apparently the R3974 Clover is meant to be compatible now with QMU CPUs, but a lot of people are finding this isn't the case. And so this version is actually a patch version by Dreadcop, and so we'll be using this one to install on our system. And this one seems to work absolutely perfectly. Okay, so click on to continue and then continue again and continue once more and now we're going to click on to customize and uh, what we need to choose here is install clover in the ESP and then click on install clover for UFI booting only then check drivers 64 UEFI and also check the themes box and now just click on to install and because Clover is installed in the EFI partition, you'll see that partition be mounted during the install. And now with the Clover installation complete, we can close that and we want to open the EFI partition and open the Clover folder. And then here the config plist, we're going to delete the one that we've just installed into Clover and replace it with the one from which we downloaded from the description. OK, and now next we're going to do the same with the Kex folder. So if we delete the Kex folder here, and then replace that one with the one from the description. This is optional. The only difference between this and the original Kex file is I've put the HDMI audio Kex in here in case you want to pass through a graphics card and have audio from that at a later date. And now just copy the Clover configurator onto the desktop. Now this is a really useful program in case you want to adjust your Clover configuration. Okay, with that complete, now let's just tidy up the desktop a bit and then we'll go on to install Splashtop Streamer. And after installation is complete, you'll be asked to either sign in with your Splashtop username and password or to sign up for a free account. Okay, so that's all the steps we need to do within the virtual machine. So now we just need to shut this down and then transfer the virtual image across to Unraid and convert it to a compatible format. So navigate to Documents and Virtual Machines and there you'll see the VM image. Go down here and click Show Package Contents and then inside there you'll see a file called virtualdisk.vmdk now right click and then copy this file and then we're going to move it to our virtual machine share and we'll make a new folder there and I'm going to call mine Sierra and then just copy the file into this folder and once done I'm just going to rename this to make it easier I'm going to rename it Sierra again so now that's copied across, let's make a new remote SSH connection to the server and then we can convert the file into a raw file that we can use with our VM. OK, so just make the SSH connection to the server, pop in your password and log in. And now the first thing we need to do is navigate to the directory where we store our VM images. For most of you that will be a directory called domains, but mine here is called virtual systems. And now enter this command, cd space and then in quotation marks, forward slash mnt, forward slash user, forward slash, for me it's virtual systems, but whatever your share is called, and then forward slash Sierra, and then close the quotations and hit enter. So now we're in the location of where we just transferred the VMDK file that we created in VMware. So now let's just double check that by typing ls. And you can see here the file name sierra.vmdk. So now we need to enter a command to convert this file. So enter the following command. qmu hyphen img space convert space hyphen p space hyphen f space vmdk space hyphen then capital O space raw space sierra.vmdk 
space sierra.img. Then just hit enter and when it reaches 100% it's done. So now let's just check the directory again. We'll type in ls again to list the directory. And now we'll see that there's two files there. There's the sierra.img and there's the sierra.vmdk. So now we're ready to set up our VM template and then start up the VM. So we're going to base it on a Linux template. So scroll down and click on Linux. And we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call mine zero. Sierra so it comes to the top of my VM list and give it some CPUs however many you want to assign to it and also give it some memory for machine type you want to leave it on Q35 use the highest version you've got I've got 2.7 because I'm running the RC version of Unraid but if you're running the stable version you'll have going up to 2.5 and for BIOS type choose OVMF and then scroll down to till you come to the primary VDIS location. We're going to set this manually and we're going to choose the location of where we save the file that we just converted from the VMDK file to a raw image. So for me that's in user and virtual systems and Sierra and there's my image there. And for primary VDIS bus it must be SATA and as while I'm here, I'm actually going to change my icon so I've got one that represents OS X. Scroll down to the bottom, but untick Start VM after creation because we now need to make some manual edits to this. So click on to create and then click on to it again. And now this time click Edit XML. And if you scroll down, we're looking for the part where the network adapter is. And here it is where it says interface type equals bridge and then there'll be a MAC address underneath. Now what we're going to do is delete all of this and everything beneath it. So the right way down to the bottom we just delete all of this out the way. And now you need to have the file from the description downloaded again. And if you open that folder you'll see there's a file here saying OSX XML file for VNC setup. Well if you open that with a text editor and you can see here that we've got similar XML to what we just deleted. It starts with the interface type equals bridge and then has the MAC address. So there's one thing we're going to have to change before we copy and paste this into the XML and that is this line here. Now this is very important. If you don't put the OSK key in, your VM is not going to start. Now, unfortunately, I can't just tell you what the OSK key is. You are going to have to extract it from a real Apple Mac. You can't actually extract it from a Hackintosh. Now, if you don't know how to extract an OSK key, then I have done a video showing you how to do it. But even when you extract the key, a lot of people have had problems because they think when they see the key, it isn't a key um, because it's actually a phrase. Um, don't expect to see anything like a Windows install key. It's nothing like that. It is just a phrase. And when you read it, you'll think you've done something wrong and you think there's no way it could be that. But it is. Just copy the phrase and paste it in there. You'll see what I mean when you read the OSK key yourself. Anyway, so once you've put your OSK key in, copy this and then just paste it here below in the area from which you had deleted the other XML file earlier and then click on to update and that's it now we're ready to start our VM so click on to the VM and click on to start and straight away go on to VNC remote now this has booted us into the Clover bootloader but we need to do one thing before we actually start we need to change the resolution in the settings of the OVMF so what we need to do to do that is we need to go across on here until we see restart computer and we need to restart it and as it restarts we need to press the delete key but if we're accessing this with a Mac then we need to press the function and the backspace which is the same as the delete key on a PC so let's do that now press enter and then keep pressing delete as it starts and you'll see it will bring us into a setup screen okay good so now if you go down to device manager and then go down to OVMF platform configuration and here you'll see the resolution is set at 640 by 480 so we need to up the resolution here 
and we need to up it to 1920 by 1080. So press enter and then go down the list, select the 1920 by 1080 and then click commit changes and exit and I always just go back in one last time just to check that I haven't done anything wrong. So yeah it says preferred resolution at next boot is going to be 1920 by 1080. So again we'll commit changes and exit and now press escape to go back and now we can click continue. So now what we're going to do we're just going to close the window and we're going to force stop the VM just so it definitely starts afresh using that resolution. So then click straight back onto start and then open the VNC window again and let's maximize the window now. Okay so here we are on the Clover boot window so just press enter to boot from OS X. So let's just open up Safari and we're just going to play a video file and as you can see there's no sound. Now one of the things I said was really good about Splashtop Desktop is that we have sound from it. So let's just close this window here now and now I'm going to show you me connecting to it with Splashtop Desktop. Okay, here we are, Ed's Mac. So now you can see we have proper sound on the Mac. But if you notice, we don't actually have a sound card passed through. So what it's using for the sound is it's using two-channel Soundflower. So I think Splashtop's great. So if you're using a remote connection, you can have sound as well. So there's really no point using VNC, especially when Splashtop's a free program. So guys, everything's installed and everything's looking good. So I hope you enjoyed this alternative way to install OSX on your server. I think it's a lot easier than the old way. And very soon I'll be doing a video that a lot of you have asked for about how to pass through graphics cards and like USB cards to your OSX virtual machine. But there's one thing for you guys to remember who are not familiar with Hackintoshes and haven't maybe set up a virtual OSX machine before. Well, any hardware that you pass through, it has to be compatible with OSX. So passing through a graphics card like a 10 series NVIDIA is just not going to work um, because there are no web drivers available for that yet. So when choosing hardware to pass through for your OSX virtual machine, before you go and buy it, just have a look on some of the Hackintosh websites and do a bit of research and see if the hardware that you've got your eye on is going to work in your OSX VM. So guys, it's time for me to say goodbye as it's the end of the video. And if you did like the video, then please guys hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos from me, then please subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in that next video.